Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. I am going to walk you through the process of setting up a new Lightroom catalog and importing photographs into it. So first we're going to create a new catalog and uh, my catalogs, all of my Lightroom catalogs are in a particular drive. Um, mine are in uh, drive G here which and they're in a folder called Lightroom Catalogs. I've got a whole lot of them. And I'm going to put these into a folder called Other. And I'm going to create this catalog and I'm going to call it um, Practice Catalog. And I'm going to click Save. That will put that catalog into that folder. I now have a new catalog that has nothing in it. So it is instructing me to click the import button to begin. So before I do that though, let's just visit a few settings. Let's go to preferences. That was under edit preferences. And let's just walk through all of these. Um, language is English. This is good. Uh, we don't care whether we slow, show the splash screen or not. Automatically check for updates. It's a good idea. Uh, when starting to use when starting to use this catalog, load most recent catalog. That doesn't really make any sense, but nevertheless, um, when you open up Lightroom, you want it to open up the most recent catalog, probably. So you have other options in there. You can, spe speci bleh, you can specify catalog. I have mine on open most recent. Uh, you can make it show the import dialog when a memory card is detected, if you'd like. I'd like to uh, have control over that. Um, I strongly suggest checking ignore camera generated folder names when naming folders. Normally you want to, uh, you're, you don't necessarily want to use the folder names that your camera created. And you do not want to treat JPEG files next to raw files as separate photos. In other words, if you're shooting raw plus JPEG, you don't want Lightroom to treat those two files as separate. You want them to treat, you want them to treat them, you want Lightroom to treat them as, um, as connected. And I like to have uh, some sort of noise happen when I uh, finish an import and an export. That's uh, up to you if you want to do that. And let's look at presets. And I have nothing set, nothing checked on here. And going on to external editor, uh, if you have light, if you have Photoshop installed, you should see it show up in here. And uh, you do want to do 16-bit, um, assuming that you're working from raw files. Raw files are 12-bit usually. Uh, but in any case, they are greater than 8 bits. So you'll, in order to uh, have the advantage of that extra um, information, you need to go to 16 bit. If you have an additional application, you can specify what you want in this setting here. File handling, I don't use DNG, and uh, so I just skip all this. And then interface, uh, just stuff here. Let's see, is there anything important here? You can specify uh, under the film strip heading if you, you know, what you want to show. Um, I've got, you know, you can take a look at what my settings are, pause, look at it, and moving on. Um, let's see, we also want to look at some uh, catalog settings. So from the general tab here, we're going to go, we're going to go to catalog settings. And we're going to start with general. Nothing we can change here other than you want to specify that you want to back up your catalog periodically. I have mine set for once a week when Lightroom exits. And that's the catalog. That's not the images themselves. That's the catalog file. It's, that's the catalog file. Um, and uh, so then file handling, I've got mine set to previews of um, um, 1440 pixels and medium quality. And I just uh, delete them after 30 days. Because I have discovered that the computer can generate them quickly enough that I don't really need to take up the computer space in keeping them. Metadata, uh, offer suggestions, sure. Um, include developed settings in metadata inside JPEG, TIFF, and PSD files, yes. And automatically write changes into XMP. You do want that, so please do check that. Because if you don't have that checked, then um, applications like Photoshop will not be able to recognize changes you've made in Lightroom uh, unless you make you open the file from within Lightroom. So 
write date or time changes into primary into proprietary raw files. I do not do that. And so we're all set here. That's everything. Click OK. And now we're ready to import. So click on the import button. And we're going to find the files that we're going to import here. Now, if you have a uh, card reader attached or a camera attached, you'll see that show up in here. And uh, I happen to have a few files set aside on my desktop. So let's see if I can find my desktop. Uh, here it is. And I've got some pictures of Charlie Leuven, who is a country singer. And so I just clicked on that. And again, if you have your, your uh, card reader, you just click on that. And then over here at the top, I don't want to just add these. I want to actually copy them to a new location because I'm copying from my card reader, presumably. So I'm going to click Copy. I don't want to copy as DNG because even if you do want to use DNG, it takes too much time to do the conversion during the copy process. So if you want to create DNG files, do it later. Uh, at this point, you just want to copy them to a new location, assuming you're using your card reader. Um, if you're just generating a catalog from an existing set of images, you may want to simply add them without moving them. But uh, I'm, you know, generally, you're going to want to copy them to a specific location. And then let's see, uh, render previews. Um, I think minimal is good, or even um, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I used to do one-to-one, uh, -one, but that takes too much time in the import process. And as I said, I uh, discovered that it doesn't take that long for the computer to do it. I do not recommend making a second copy of your files to some designated location here, but only if you are really conscientious about backing up your image files. And uh, that is a must. You must back up your image files someplace. So either do it here or someplace else. Uh, I prefer a different system than this. And you do want to rename your files because uh, the camera name will, on most cameras, you'll eventually run out of uh, names and it'll have to start repeating. And you don't want to do that. The template I use, you can click on this and um, uh, edit a template. I don't In this video, I don't want to go through that. Uh, but the template that I use is year, year, dash, month, month, underscore, and an image number. And the image number is simply uh, from the first uh, number. Uh, you know, the first image that you ever import is number one, and it goes up from there. Uh, let's see. Extension, leave as is, of course. And apply dur during import. Uh, definitely do not do any develop settings. Uh, metadata, you can... Uh, I have a copyright uh, configuration here I'm, uh, um, that's beyond the scope of this particular video. Uh, we'll leave that at none for the moment, but you you would like to uh, have copyright. I'll go ahead and set this for my basic copyright information for 2011. And um, that's the content of another video, though. And destination, this is quite important. You have to decide where you want to put your, fo your photos. Now, I have a designated drive. Uh, drive N is my photo drive. But uh, it has nothing in it but my photographs. It's an external hard drive. If you have such a thing, you'll see it on here. Just click on that drive. And assuming there's nothing else in it but photographs, just click on the drive letter if you're in a PC or the drive name if you're in a Macintosh. And then let it um, go from there. But uh, assuming you don't have that, then you'd, for example, put them into My Pictures. And you'd probably want to have a new folder within my pictures. It's important that everything within here is just your photo file. So let's create a new folder in there that we're gonna call, um, we're gonna call photos. Oops, I don't wanna do that. I want to make a new folder um, that's gonna be called photos. I click okay and that did not go into my pictures. My mistake. Uh, so let's do this again. Let's see. Oh, yes, it did go into my pictures. I'm sorry. Here's my pictures, and there's photos. So that's where we want to put these things. And um, so I'm going to close that so we don't get confused. And let's see. The other thing we want to do is to specify um, it's going to go into a subfolder. And... We don't want to organize by, we don't want everything in a single folder. I'm going to organize by date. 
And the date format that I would like you to use because it really makes the most sense is the year and then a subfolder of the month and then a subfolder of that of the day. Sounds like a lot, but it really uh, makes the system much simpler to deal with. So um, actually, we don't want that that subfolder checked because we're going to let Lightroom handle all of the folder organization in this structure right here. So my mistake, we don't want to check into subfolder up there. So that's everything we need. And now we're going to just click import. If you don't want to in, in, in import all of these, you can uncheck some of them. You can uncheck all, you can check all. Um, but um, let's see, make sure that don't import suspected duplicates is checked. That's important. And now we're going to import these. And there we go. We got a little ding sound. The import's finished. And now you can see over here that it's in a folder. Um, these were shot in 2010. So uh, it was, in fact, um, in what month is that? July of 2010. And then you can see the days. Uh, we had one, we had three of them on uh, July 4th, 22 of them on July 5th, 12 on July 6th, and three on July 7th. So notice that it is rem it is recognizing the, the date these were shot uh, from the uh, metadata. So there you go. That's how you create a new, catalog, a new catalog. And the next time I go to import photographs, it will remember the settings that I used this time and import to the same place. So thank you very much. I hope that's been helpful.